Hey Sojourning Scholars, it's Chuki here from SojourningScholar.com, the number one platform that empowers international students and working professionals in the U.S. So at this point, you've submitted your financial documents required by your prospective university and you've received your Form I-20 that allows you to go ahead and apply for a U.S. student visa. But now you might be overwhelmed with the question, what is the next step to follow after receiving the Form I-20? And that's going to be the subject of this video where I lay out an exact but simple three-step process that you should follow after receiving the Form I-20. This is going to include reviewing the Form I-20, paying your service fee, and booking an appointment for your U.S. visa interview. Coming right up. So now you've received your Form I-20, which could have been delivered electronically or delivered by mail. The first thing you should do is to review the Form I-20, paying close attention to the spelling of your first name and your last name, and all the biographical information that's contained on the first page of the I-20. You would also want to review page 3 of the I-20 that contains instructions for you, the student, who is going to be responsible for signing the Form I-20. Now, once you've read and understood everything on page 3 of the I-20, and when you've checked that your information appears correctly on the I-20, you will then sign the I-20 in the Student Attestation section located at the bottom of page number 1. Your signature here on the I-20 should be in black ink and the date you write on the I-20 should be the date you sign the I-20. For example, if I sign the I-20 on August 1st of 2021, then the date I'm going to write on the I-20 should be August 1st of 2021. Now, if you happen to be under the age of 18 at the time you're signing the Form I-20, you would also need to provide a signature and a date from your parent or guardian. Again, this entry from your parent or guardian on the Form I-20 should be printed in black ink. Now, you should keep in mind that on the Form I-20, the attestation section appearing in page number one is the one and only place that you're ever going to write anything in. Once you've signed and dated your Form I-20 on page number one, your job is done. Now, if you'd like to learn more about the Form I-20, you can find a video linked in the description section below where I take a deep dive explaining what every section of the Form I-20 is. Now, the second step in this process is to book an appointment for your U.S. F-1 visa interview. Now, in order to do this, you would have to go to the U.S. Department of State website and find the nearest U.S. embassy or consulate that's currently accepting F-1 visa interview appointments. You can find a link to the U.S. Department of State website in the description section below. Now, it's possible that when you go to the U.S. Department of State website, you may not be able to find any U.S. embassies or consulates that are currently accepting F-1 visa interview appointments. In such a case, you might need to look into making an emergency visa interview appointment with the U.S. Embassy and Consulate in your home country, as it is quite possible that the U.S. Embassy or Consulate in your home country might be offering special treatment for students who are trying to enter the U.S. on an F-1 visa. Now, once you've been able to secure your U.S. visa appointment, preferably on a date that works best for you, you would want to go ahead and pay the service fee which is also called the service I-901 fee. You would find a link in the description section below to the U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement website where you can pay the service fee. Now, you should plan to pay your service fee and have a receipt of payment before you attend your U.S. F-1 visa interview. Now, at the time of recording this video, the service fee for prospective F-1 students is set at $350, but that price is set to change at any time in the future. So if you ever want to know what the updated service fee is, make sure to check out the link in the description section below. Now, at the time of making this video, the service fee could be paid in three different options. The first way is the most common way, and that is by making an online payment. The second method of payment is by Western Union Quick Pay, and the third form of payment is payment in U.S. dollars made using a personal check from a U.S. bank or using a money order. Now, here's exactly how you can go about paying the service fee online. We go to fmjfee.com, which you can find the link down in the description section below. On this web page, you're going to click on pay I-901 fee. When you arrive on this web page, it's important to pay attention to the payment instruction that's shown on the page. Here it states that you must have a complete and accurate form I-20, which is given to prospective F-1 and M-1 students or you must have a completed Form DS-2019, 
which is given to prospective J1 students. And if you've received the Form I-20 or your Form DS 2019 and it happens to contain an incorrect information, then you must contact your designated school official or your program sponsor. Now, a very important note about the service fee is that if you have any dependents coming to the U.S. on an F2, an M2, or J2 visa, they are not required to pay the service fee. The service fee is only required for prospective immigrants coming to the U.S. on an F1, M1, and J1 visa. On the first entry, you would want to put in your service ID, which you can find this on the top left corner of your Form I-20, and you can also find this on your top left corner of the Form DS 2019. Then you enter your last name and your first name as it appears on your Form I-20 or your Form DS 2019. Finally, you would enter your date of birth with the birth month first, the birth day second, and the birth year last. Once you're done, you click and submit, and if information is entered correctly, you would be taken to a page that accepts your online payment in the form of a credit card. Once again, at the time of making this video, if you're making a payment of the service fee as a prospective F1 or M1 student, then the service fee would be $350. While for prospective J1 visa students, the current service fee is set at $220. Now, once your payment for your service fee is accepted online, a payment confirmation page will be generated. You are required to print out this confirmation page and present this as proof of your service fee payment before you attend your F1 visa interview. Now, at any point in the future, if you'd like to find out the status of your service fee payment, or if you'd like to obtain a payment receipt, you can always come back to this website on fmjfee.com and you click on the check I-901 status. And similarly, on this webpage, all you have to do is enter your service ID as it appears in your Form I-20 to your Form DS 2019. You enter your last name, your date of birth, and once you're done, you click on the check status slash view payment confirmation button. Now, I should bring to your attention that if you are an F or M visa student who is a citizen of Cameroon, Kenya, Ghana, Nigeria, or Gambia, you cannot make a payment of your service fee online. Instead, you would have to make a payment using the alternative options, which are payment in Western Union Quick Pay and payment in US dollars using a money order or personal check drawn from a US bank. You're not allowed to make cash payments for your service fee. Now, if you are a citizen of one of these countries and you'd like to learn how to make a payment using the alternative options, I'm going to leave a link to the US government website that explains how to make a payment using Western Union Quick Pay and how to mail your payment using a money order or a personal check. Now, if you are a citizen of one of these mentioned countries and you choose to make a payment of your service fee by mail, then you would have to leave enough time for your service fee payment to be received and processed by the student and exchange visitor program. This way, you can guarantee that the payment confirmation of your service fee would be available for you to print out and take to your U.S. visa interview appointment. So to wrap this up, as an F1 student who's received the Form I-20, your first step would be to review and sign the Form I-20. Your second step would be to apply for your F1 visa and book your F1 visa interview appointment. And your third step would be to pay your service fee and receive a payment confirmation before you attend your F1 visa interview. And there you have it. These are the three simple steps that you should follow after you've received your Form I-20. Now, the next phase you're going to be working on is getting ready for your F1 visa interview. And if you want to catch the video where I'm going to be giving you some great tips on your F1 visa interview, make sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell. Please like and share this video if you've got some value out of it. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you on the next one. But until then, be unbounded.